Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes, and welcome to any guests with us today, and to those of you joining us from home via the live stream. Today, we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. 
The presider for this liturgy is our pastor, Father Scott Wimsett. Please stand as we begin our celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather this day to give God thanks and praise, we begin by admitting that we are sinners. For the times we've sinned, let us ask now for God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, who keep the Lord's resurrection in mind, may, through the renewal brought by your Son, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those, who, <clears throat> pardon me, for those who own property or houses would sell them, <clears throat> bring the pro proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed 
to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is faith. Who indeed is the victor of the world but the one who believes and Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Yesterday afternoon, I had a wedding in the city of Owensboro at St. Stephen's Cathedral. And the bride is one of my younger cousins on my mom's side of the family. So some of the last names like Lewis and Van Meter and Sweeten and Bainline, those are the family members that uh, I was with and celebrating with. But I got to the cathedral early yesterday Uh, and parked myself in a pew and decided I needed to pray for the couple. I had started at noon on Friday at Mass here, asking the the noonday church attendees to remember them in prayer, and they did. And so I got myself in my little pew, got out my little rosary, and thought, okay, what do you pray for a couple about to be married? Do you pray the joyful mysteries? Do you pray the glorious mysteries? How about the luminous mysteries? And I thought, well, maybe the sorrowful mysteries. (laughs) Because marriage is a grave calling. Right? (laughs) And so I was praying, and suddenly I had a realization that over the past year when I would meet with Shelby and Ryan, that I had not seen their faces in so long. Because every time they stopped by here, they were masked. And then Friday night at the rehearsal, they're vaccinated, so they were able to take off their mask. And it was amazing the, the change in life along the way to see them now as young, mature adults embracing a way of life for the rest of their lives together. And so I sat there and I prayed uh, and realized, too, that uh, the cathedral parish had a little white book for Easter, which gave me another little prompt for prayer at that time, and and another book that I I kind of picked up and brought with me just to think, maybe we'll do this for ourselves. 
But in the midst of that, to think about what Thomas has to say in our gospel. I will not believe. I will not believe unless I see it. And how appropriate it was in light of that, that today, some people call it Divine Mercy Sunday. Many in our, uh, in the Christian tradition, our Protestant brothers and sisters refer to it, if they follow a liturgical schedule, refer to it as Thomas Sunday. But still it's about believing. And seeing, some people say, is believing. And I thought, how appropriate then that we have a wedding, because we need the power of God's love made manifest in our presence as a light shining in the darkness. Seeing is believing, I think. When you see a a young couple or an older couple stand before you and promise, you know, to walk the journey of life forever, it's a powerful moment. It's a powerful moment symbol for the church, the community at large, and believers to see and witness and experience. And I was joking when I thought the, the, the sorrowful mysteries. No, I prayed the joyful mysteries for them. Because I thought by them standing there, they were not only announcing something, they were bringing people together, a visit. They were bringing something to birth in our midst. They were presenting it to us And we were finding delight in it. You'll have to go back and kind of think of those words that I just used and connect them to the mysteries. But seeing was believing. But blessed are those who didn't have to see, but believed in the power of God's love. And today as we gather and we hear the beauty of the scripture that is set before us, we're challenged with an example of the in the Acts of the Apostles, that the early believers came and put it all together, and there was no need in their midst. That's powerful. And to hear in the second reading that keeping the commandments proves who we are as children of God. And then the glory that is found in the gospel today in the person of Thomas. But you know, Thomas was a twin. And his twin I, is, is not named. And oftentimes I think that's very intentional. Because even on our journey of faith at times, I think that even as a people of faith, there's a lot of doubt along the way. And we look for affirmation and, and we look for proof. And we bargain with God. If only you would reveal this to me, I will be a believer. But I'm often reminded in the scriptures too that If you don't believe in the law or the prophets, you're not going to believe if someone rose from the dead. There's a scripture passage there that backs that up. So Thomas, standing in there with all of his brothers and some of the sisters, you know, they're telling him what they've seen and what they've experienced. Well, I want to see the nail marks. I want to see the side in his side, the, the lance mark in his side. So maybe today as we we hear that example of the struggle and the the closeness of belief and doubt, we can find something there for ourselves. That in the person of Thomas, we we might see a little bit of our, our own struggle. And it's okay. Because he comes to believe. And Jesus... John records all of this for us that we may have faith and basically have life in his name. So today as we gather on this Divine Mercy Sunday or Thomas Sunday, we find that God's love is great, far greater than we can imagine, even at times when we don't feel it completely, he's with us and in our midst walking the journey with us to give us hope and courage whatever comes our way. So maybe today in the scripture, maybe in the example in the power of love that often is before us, that we see a gift that is extended to you and to me. And through that gift, we may have life, have faith, and 
hope in his name. So as Jesus calls us to be his followers, let us embrace the call and know that he is always with us. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus greets the disciples gathered in the upper room. Peace be with you. With confidence, we pray. Our response is, loving God, hear our prayer. That we celebrate with those welcomed into our faith at Easter and witness Christ's resurrection and saving gift, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. On this divine mercy of Jesus Sunday, we pray that strife, discord, and violence within the hearts of people and within nations of the world be healed, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. That those bound by fear receive the gift of Jesus' spirit so that the barriers that bind them may be broken and that they may, be, they may enjoy the fullness of life, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. That our loved ones who have died, especially Mary Crush, may rise from death to life in Christ, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. That the experience of the Paschal mystery stir within us a Thomas encounter that, like him, we become strong believers and embrace our Lord and God in the word made flesh, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you lavish upon us your gifts of faith and peace so that we may share your Son's life. Grant the blessings we ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many with the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When, when we, we eat, eat this bread, bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. If you're in a pew with a loved one, a family member, you may at this time offer them the sign of peace, if not a gesture of peace to your neighbors and friends, and to those at home watching God's peace and love with you today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you, that should, you enter should enter under my roof, roof. but only, only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We are an Easter people. Believing in the resurrection, we bear witness to our lives in Christ, as together we pray the stewardship prayer. Our parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. It will be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will be prayerful if I pray. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring others into its worship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy if I, who make it what it is, am filled with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I shall dedicate myself to the task of being all the things that I want our parish to be. Amen. We are thrilled that we have been able to resume our full mass schedule as of last weekend on Easter. However, be advised that on April 25th, which is two weekends from now, the 11.30 mass is only going to be open for our First Communion families. On that day only, it will be closed to the general public. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, to love, and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.